Hey guys, okay, so this is part three in a whole series of tutorials that will teach you how to create professional specification drawings to accompany your fashion illustrations. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you technique number two. This is basically where we take our model template, our proportionate model template, we then print it off from the printer, and we then start to hand sketch or hand draw our, let's say, specification drawings onto that template. We're then gonna take that into Adobe Illustrator, and we're then gonna trace uh, those illustrations, but make them digital. Um, yeah, so it's a really, really quick, simple technique. It's very handy if you're not very good when it comes to Adobe Illustrator because you have something like a template to work from first of all. I'm also gonna show you how to trace design elements from, let's say, garment imagery found online on the internet. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna print off my print template and we're gonna start actually drawing, let's say, our specification drawing. Okay, so with my uh, proportional model template printed off, I'm now just gonna start sketching one side of my, uh, let's say, technical drawing. So this is just pure hand drawing. It's nothing to do with Adobe Illustrator at this point in time. So let's start off. So what I'm gonna go for, let's go for something with quite a sharp shoulder line. And also I'm using a 0.5 sort of like clicky retractable pen, just because, or pencil, just because the line's far thinner, you don't have to sharpen your pencil. It just keeps things very, very simple and very clean. So let's just go into it. I'm only going to do one side because I'm going to basically mirror it across the opposite side. I'm going to add in my button stand and everything later on, but it's just purely just to create something at least anyway. So I'm going to use that, I'm going to scan that into Adobe Illustrator, and we're then going to basically trace those lines to create our, um, yeah, let's say our digital specification illustration. I'm going to do the same for, let's say, I'm going to do three of these, one of them which we're going to mirror and reflect, so it's like a shirt concept with like a, a large lantern sleeve. This one I'm going to do an asymmetric style, and the reason why I'm doing asymmetric is because, let's say our garment is not, well it's asymmetric, this two, one side is not the same as the opposite side, so this just gives us an idea on how to do that, so let's just have some fun. You can see I'm doing this very, very quickly, very easily. I'm not worrying too much about it. Just because I can make this really neat in Adobe Illustrator. But it's just giving me an idea of, of how we can translate a hand-drawn sketch into Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so I'm happy with those three for now. So let's just take those over to Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna scan them in using my A4 flatbed scanner. I'm gonna scan them into Adobe Illustrator. We're then going to lock them down so they're a template and then we're gonna to start to illustrate them in Adobe Illustrator. You saw how quickly that was to create those three sketches. And obviously it should be a lot quicker to create them in Adobe for Illustrator as well. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see, I've just simply scanned in my pages, or the little fashion illustrations I did. They're not absolutely amazing, but they're going to give us, uh, it just kind of like gives you an idea of how we're going to translate these into Adobe Illustrator and digitize them. So I've scanned them in. I'm just going to open them up in Adobe Illustrator. So let's just close those down. And uh, let's just grab these and take them into Adobe Illustrator. Shouldn't take too long to load up. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to simply, this is my first one, I'm just going to grab it, I'm going to copy and paste it into the document that we were working on uh, originally in part one and part two. So let's just make a little bit of space. We don't need this model here at all. Let's just, in fact, no, let's keep her. And what I'll do is, I'm just going to move all these off to the side. It's a big selection tool, click and drag over all of them, and let's just move them off. Uh, that one's locked, so let's do that again. Move them off to the side, and then here I'm just going to paste in that illustration. As you can see, it's far, far smaller than my actual model. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get my big section tool, I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to go to my transparency, which is on the right here. You can also find it by going window and then transparency just down there. And let's just make this 30%. So when I hover or bring it over on top of my model, you can see that you can see the model and also the illustration. And I'm just going to resize it just simply by grabbing this corner here, holding down my shift key and my option key on my keyboard, and I can just resize it until it fits roughly the size of my model, which is going to be, okay, it's a little bit too big still. Let's just make it a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Okay, so we're working on the asymmetric version first, that's fine, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which one we work on. Make it a little bit smaller. There you go, that'll do. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 100% 
and there we have our illustration. And what I'm doing is get my big section tool, click on it, I'm gonna go object and then lock selection. So now I can't edit it or move it. In fact, my model is uh, not locked, so I'm just gonna click and drag over here and go object and then lock selection as well. So now I can't edit anything. And we're then basically just gonna to start to map this out. So once again, I'm just gonna get my pen tool. I'm gonna to click on this point here. I'm gonna to go to this point. I'm gonna create the bodice first. In fact, no, let's do the whole outline and I'm just gonna map it. But first of all, let's go to my, we want to remove the fill. So I'm just gonna click on this, remove it. Let's double click on our stroke. Let's click OK and let's make that two points so we can see it clearly. OK, great. Let's go to this point. And obviously, depending on how intricate your illustration is, I'm just going to map it out. I'm just clicking and then if we've got a little curve, I'm just going to click and drag to create the beziers. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. Let's go down to the bottom here. And because it's asymmetric, I'm going around the whole entire item. If it was not asymmetric and it was just a... Um, well, if it was symmetrical, I would only do one side and then obviously I would, um, let's say, mirror over to the opposite side. If you've seen part one and part two of this tutorial, you'll understand what I mean. If you haven't, then probably go back and watch those first because it's probably a better idea to watch those first before we do this. Let's just click in and click in here as well. Great. Oh, we've got a little bit here. So let's go to small selection tool. Click on the line. Go to my convert anchor point tool. Click and drag. There we go. I can even get that point and I can just nudge it out of my arrow keys. And then let's start adding in the other lines as well. So let's just go for, go all the way down to the bottom here. Let's move that out, just get it in line. Here we go, and let's add our details. So let's take this down to 0.5, and then I'm going to add in my seam lines. Let's go down to the bottom here. I'm actually going to create panels. So at the moment, as you see, I've only got this, this section here. I'm actually going to take it down to this point. Take it up, take it to here, then here, and then here. And the reason why we're doing this is because if I wanted to fill this panel independently, I could then just simply give it a color, like that. Okay, so let's do the other ones. I'm going to draw my panel from here, down to here, to here, to here, to here. Let's do another one. Let's go for this one. I'm just going to keep doing this until we've pretty much completed it. And you'll see what this looks like once I've actually done all of these lines and then I've obviously removed that background template. So pen tool, let's just click, click. I'm doing all of my panels. Trying to mimic the outline as well. Let's do this one. And there's going to be a few little bits and pieces that I'm going to need to tidy up, but I'm going to do that a bit later. Oops, it's not quite the right place. Let's just put it there. Go all the way around, mapping it out. Move that in a little bit. Almost last one now. Final panel. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So now what we'll do is I'm just gonna to go to Object, Unlock All. I'm just gonna click on that drawing, just like that, and we're gonna remove it. I'm just gonna delete it. So now, as you can see, we have our, let's say our illustration that we've traced from that scan. And I'm just gonna go and click on the outline of this block, and let's just give it a little bit of a fill so we can see what it all looks like and it's looking pretty good so I'm quite happy with that however I just probably want to neaten this up a little bit because I can see it's not quite at the side neck point we've got a few other issues so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to move these in to make it a little bit more consistent 
but also because we've got panels within panels, I'm going to get my small section tool, I'm going to click and drag over these two points here, and that means when I move the panel, it'll move both of them rather than independently. So, for example, if I click on just one, you can see I'm only moving one of these panel pieces. So let's just take it up to the top, and then let's move this around. We can also click and drag over these points, move this down a little bit. I can even just like correct this, perhaps. Same with this one, we can take these points, just move them down ever so slightly. Same with this one. So we're just basically starting to correct it. So maybe, you know, your, let's say your illustration is not quite how you want it. You can then in Adobe Illustrator just very easily tweak and play around with these points until you get them in the right locations. There we go. Same here, these panels aren't quite matching up, so let's just put those in the right location. I'm just clicking and dragging those points around. We can also change some of these curves. So you're just basically neating up your illustration. Same with this one, let's move that out, let's move it back in again. We need to add a little bit of curvature here, just so it's consistent with that other curve panel. Here we go, let's have a look, same down here as well. Let's move this point down, let's move it up, let's add a little bit of curvature. If you're not sure what these tools are, what I'm using them, once again, please just watch uh, tutorial part one and part two, and obviously I go into quite a lot of depth when it comes to these tools, so with the pen tool, etc. But by this point you should actually uh, have a really good working knowledge of these tools because we use them quite a lot. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually grab our model. So I'm just get my big section tool, click on the model, click on the arm as well. And let's just drag that off to the side. And this is our little fashion illustration. Now, if I want to add more to this, I can. So for example, here, you can see that these lines, these are great, but at the same time, um, it's not mapping. In other words, there's not an outline here. You said this is a thick line, it's an outline, which indicates that it's the outline of the pattern, whereas this is also the outline of the pattern because it's actually the sleeve. So I'm just gonna add little bits and pieces just to make it a little bit better. And I can also, if I want to start adding some top stitching to this and adding other little bits and pieces, little details. So I just go to my pen tool. I can then, let's say, Click here, click here, create curvature. I can move that point up ever so slightly, depends on how close you want your top stitch to be. And then here we can just go dashed line. Let's make that two and 1.5. Lovely. Same here as well. We can just add a bit of top stitching. Just with my pen tool, just gonna click create that curved line. We can then click on that point, move it up ever so slightly, click on that end point with the small selection tool, move it around. And so you can start You can start to add and build little bits and pieces to your illustration. We could also even let's say, for example, well, that panel's a little bit too wide here, so maybe we can move it in. We have to do the same for all of these panels though. So as you can see, we can mess around, play around with it, but I'm not gonna to do too much to that because it's gonna be time consuming. But as you can see, we've now digitized, let's say this product in Adobe Illustrator. Maybe we should add a little bit of curvature here, for example, as well. Great stuff, we can even put in some buttons. Let's go to our, let's say, ellipse tool. Click on the ellipse tool, then hold down shift and alt on your keyboard or shift and option on your keyboard just to draw a little proportionate circle. Let's make this, let's say, one. It depends if I want to add any other details to this. Possibly I don't. Maybe, yeah, it's going to be simple and static as it is. Click and drag that down. D, 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 oops, we want to copy that. So let's just copy and paste. Okay, depends how much you want to put on there, what you want to do exactly. So yeah, let's just get rid of that. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's let's say sketch one, which I'm quite happy with. And once again, because we made individual panels, I can now then just go and fill this with a color. That's probably not a very nice color, but at least we can do it. So we can actually start to create 
let's say, color to our piece as well. But I'm not going to show you um, color and texture and print just yet. I just want to show you how you can basically draw an illustration using your print template, scale it up, import it into Adobe Illustrator, and then obviously you can digitize it and start to add bits and pieces to it. So it's got a big section tool. I'm just going to click over all that and go object and then group. And we can move it off to the side here. There we go. And we can give that a little bit of a fill. Great. Okay, so let's just grab the shirt one, because this could be quite fun. Let's just copy this, put it into my illustration pack, control V, and let's just scale this up a little bit. Once again, let's go to transparency. Let's make this about 50%. I'm gonna move it over my mannequin. Okay, I made it a little bit too big. Let's just click and drag that in, holding the shift key to constrain those proportions. A little bit more perhaps. Let's zoom in and let's move it around. Still a little bit too large. Okay, there we go, that'll do. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make this 100%. And then I'm gonna go to Object and then Lock Selection. Let's see if my model, yeah, let's go Object and then Lock Selection. And now we can start to trace this off. So first of all, let's do this sleeve. So I'm gonna get my pen tool. First of all, I'm gonna remove the fill. So I'm going to click there, I'm going to click on that little red line, double click on this, which is my stroke color. Let's click OK. And let's make this two points. And we can now start to map this out. So it just goes to show that you can actually create some really nice, let's say, technical spec um, illustrations, but obviously using your template that you've already drawn, for example. I'm just gonna trace around this using the pen tool and obviously clicking and dragging to create those nice curves, like so. Click and drag, click and drag. Let's go up to the top here. And this is really interesting to, or not interesting to mention, but it's probably important to mention. So as you can see, I'm not actually drawing into my, uh, let's say, collar, because I want to keep that separate. Come to that in a minute. So let's just draw in the rest of this. Let's make that 0.5 because it's a seam line. And then let's go from this point to this point, and let's make that two. Great stuff. And we can even put in our little darts as well. By clicking and dragging, there we go, let's make that 0.5. And we can also put in, let's say, our little details as well here. So let's say these little pleats. I don't have to use the existing um, thing that I've drawn, it's just like an indicator. There we go, we can also add it in here as well. So we could do like a line down here. And a little line here as well, just to add a little bit of fluidity. And if I wanted to add pleats, I could, but you know what, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna add like a little sort of like keyhole detail here. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and then going to up, let's make it, and let's also give it like this rounded edge as well. Let's just up it a little bit more. Let's make it not yet four, let's go object and then expand and then click, not fill, but stroke, click OK. OK, that didn't work because these lines are too close, so let's just make that a little bit smaller. Let's snip that, let's move this piece out. There we go, and this piece out as well. Move it in a little bit perhaps, let's make it a little bit bigger. Object, expand, click OK. And then here, let's just snip the bottom bits off. We can add a line down here. And then let's create our little cuff. There we go, I'm actually gonna join these two together. So I'm gonna join the sleeve and the cuff together. Like so, we can remove that point. And let's just draw in a line across here, which we can then make 0.5 to indicate it as a seam line. 
Great stuff. Let's maybe move this line over to this point here. Let's go P. Just going to add an outline to this to show that that is actually an opening. Oops, what happened there? Let's also make that a rounded edge. Bring that down. There we go. Great, and we can also add a little button. Well, it's not little, it's quite big, but still. Group. Let's then just align all these. Group. Get rid of that. Place that there. We could even make it a little bit smaller. We could have two buttons, for example, if you wanted to. Copy and paste and you want in. Let's just then align them and then go object and then group. This could be this could do with moving up a little bit. Okay, great. So that's let's say so now what I need to do is basically work on my collar. And this is where it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Because basically, I might want to use this collar on a different product. So I'm just going to create it separately to the one that I've already created. So let's add some details here. And you could draw this on your actual, um, let's say, your hand-drawn sketch. But I'm just going to do it in Adobe Illustrator. So could you like a little Mandarin collar, for example? So it just gives you like a base to work from. Let's move that down. There we go. Let's add in my collar. So I'm just going to do the outline first of all. Let's curve this. We can also curve this bottom line. And then here, I can click my small section tool, click on that point, and I can just simply drag that in to make it a little bit curved there. And then we can also add a fill to this. So let's make it white. So it sits on top, and there we have a nice collar. And we can even go in and add even more detail. So for example here, maybe you want to curve that a little bit to make it a little bit more three-dimensional. Let's then just, there we go. We can add some stitching. So click on this point here, click here, and here, and then here. Let's go to our anchor convert tool, anchor point convert. Same with this one. Let's make this 0.35. Let's give it a dashed line. Let's also remove the fill. You know what? I'm going to remove that point. Let's take that down to here. Let's curve that. And then here, I'm just going to, there we go. Lovely. I can move those points down a little bit. I can move this point in or around. And you know what? A really handy trick as well is if I click on this and I go object, path, offset path, and here I can put in 0.02 perhaps. Let's see what that looks like. So I can add even more detail. I can do like three layers of top stitching, which is a nice handy trick. And then let's do our collar stand. In fact, I'm going to remove that last um, three layers of stitching. So what I'm going to do is to create my collar stand really easy. I'm just going to go to my um, rectangle tool. I'm just going to click and drag. Let's drag all the way down to the bottom of this garment. We're going to remove the dash line. Let's make this. 0.5 and let's just go in and play around with it and tweak it. So because this is the center front line of my garment, what ideally we need is for the stand to sit actually over the center of it. So we're going to have to move our collar pieces out a little bit. So let's take this, let's move this out. We can then remove this center line. Delete that, we can pull this point in. Let's curve that out again. Same for this one, let's do that. Let's curve that out once again. And then we can add some more detailing. So let's just add some top stitching here. So I'm going to get my line tool. Click on my line tool and then I'm going to click and drag all the way down to the bottom, like so. Let's then click dashed line. Oops. And move that line slightly over. Okay, for some reason it should be 2 and 1.5. And I can simply just get this line, copy and paste a new one in, and then move it off to the opposite side. 
like so. This line needs to be moved in ever so slightly. And we can do the same here as well. We can add some top stitching to this. So it just depends how much detail you want to add. Perfect, and then we can add another line to this bit which basically indicates that it is the edge or it is an outline. Okay, let's move up, move that across, move this across, move this point across as well. Great stuff, and we can even use the button that we created over here, so let's just simply I've got a big section tool, select this, let's go copy, so command C to copy on your keyboard and then here we can paste it in let's just ungroup these, object, ungroup, get rid of one of them, delete grab this, bring it over to the centre here copy and paste that, place it about here for example and then if we hold the option key on our keyboard and click and drag we can duplicate it and then if we zoom out we can just hit command D on our keyboard and it will continue that duplication all the way down the shirt Looking good. Okay, at this point also, because it's looking quite messy, I'm actually just going to get rid of that tracing because I've pretty much got it already. So I'm just going to unlock everything, so object and then unlock all, which allows me to then edit my illustration. And I'm just going to simply hit backspace and delete it. And with the model, we can just simply select her, select the arm as well. We'll go object and then lock selection. We can grab this whole piece here, trace it off. And as you can see, we've got quite a nice, uh, let's say, illustration or spec illustration. And we can then, once again, we can go in, we can play with these points, we can move these around, we can open up the sleeve, it all depends on what you want to do. But it just kind of goes to show you that you can take your fashion illustration that you've done on the, um, your hand-drawn illustration, and you can then obviously digitize it and then play with it to make it look really beautiful. Also other elements, for example, like this. So this piece here, I can simply, let's ungroup it from the existing one, let's copy it. Let's paste it in, and I can add that there. Maybe we could rotate it a little bit just to keep everything nice and consistent. I could do the same. I could copy and paste it to this one as well. Keep it nice and consistent. Paste it. We can then transform and reflect it. OK. Perfect. Then let's add a little bit of color to this. So I'm just going to select the outline of this block. I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool, so I'm going to pick up this color. And at the moment, at the moment, it's right up in the layers. So I'm just going to go object, arrange, and then center back. Same with the collar piece. Get the eyedropper tool. Looking good. Zoom in. We can do this piece as well. Okay, this isn't actually a piece yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one. Let's zoom in. Grab that point. Let's then link it up. You can't really see it, but it will be there in a minute. Hang on a minute, sorry. There we go, and let's add. Perfect. Okay, so that is essentially one half of my shirt. Now what I could do is, I can then, let's lock you. I can then grab this piece, drag it over to my mannequin and my model. Let's move it up in the layers. And I'm just gonna reflect it. So transform, so right click, transform, reflect, and then copy move it over and as you can see I just want to match up those center front lines okay so I'm just going to overlap it like you would with any normal let's say placket and you could even bring this one on top oops sorry okay I haven't grouped it give me a second so sorry every single time you want to move it you want to go to your big selection tool and click and drag over that shirt and go object and then group that way when you move it it's going to move as one item also when you right click and transform and reflect it also let's go copy when you move it, it's also going to stay as one whole item. And that way we can just simply move it into position. And if we wanted to, we could always take this one, bring this up through the layers. So we go object, arrange, and then bring to front. So if you want it to be overlap on this side, or if you want the, this side to overlap, you go object, arrange, and then bring to front. Nice and easy. Also, that collar is looking a little bit too wide for her. So maybe what I would do is I would simply delete this piece. I would then grab my well, small selection tool. I'm just going to grab all of these. I'm just going to move or nudge that in. And then once again, grab my piece, transform, reflect, copy, move it off to the opposite side, try and overlap it. Let's group both of them. We can move it. There we go. Okay, so that is essentially our new 
and let's group them. So big section tool, object group. And so that is our piece number three. But the great thing about this is, is that if we wanted, so for example, pick up this collar and move it elsewhere, I'll just go to my big section tool. I'm just going to start going object, ungroup, object, ungroup. Let's see what we have. Okay, so they're now ungrouped. I'm then going to get my big section tool. I'm going to select this top stitching. Hold down the shift key to queue up my selection. Select the collar. Select this one, this one, this one. Select the button. Select the outline. So just pick up the pieces that you actually want to use. There we go. Select all these buttons. Once again, holding down the shift key. I can just go copy and paste. And there is my collar. And I can then just also add, uh, let's say, some color to that. Let's make this 0.5. And then we can also add in that external edge. Great, so that's my collar. So now essentially what I could do is I could group this. Oops. I can now big section tool, click and drag over all of it, and then go object and then group. And there's no reason why I couldn't simply apply this to this lovely little sort of like capsule concept here. So as you can see, once you've created one illustration, you can then, let's say, create more concepts but using that existing element. Let's move that up a little bit. Okay, so really useful. And then all we'd have to do essentially is got a small section tool, click and drag over these points here, move it up to the bottom of our garment, and then just small section tool, click and drag over the buttons, and then hit backspace. And you could even get your big section tool, click on this, and you could even make it ever so slightly smaller if you wanted more like delicate collar. There you go, you could put that in. You would probably have to, at this point, get your small selection tool. Let's lock the bodice. Get your small selection tool, and then we could just move this out ever so slightly. So we've reduced the size of the collar, uh, but we're then just obviously changing, uh, let's say, the collar width so it would actually sit and fit with the actual neckline. Let's move that up. And then for the actual bodice, you would then just simply take this point, drag it up, and there you have it. You do the same for this one here. You could place it over here as well. You could then move this up so you can see it. And then if you wanted to, you could then just take these points, drag this right up to here to have a really, really weird looking style, but essentially that's the concept. And also you could, so let's take this piece. Let's move those down the layers a little bit. I could even make this thinner. So if I with a small section tool, click on this edge here, and then also hold down the shift key, click on this one. You could then move this in to make it thinner or smaller. You could even get rid of it completely just by simply removing the elements. Okay, really easy. So that's a whole kind of concept that you can always, using your hand-drawn, if you can't necessarily find, or you can't create this yourself because you need a template to work from, then you could always draw it on a piece of paper or draw it on your, um, what do you call it, your proportion model template, just this, just this, um, this collar, and you could basically trace it off and then you could apply it to your, all of your various different blocks. Same with the sleeve. If you didn't know how to create it in Adobe Illustrator, you could draw it onto your proportion model template scan it in and then obviously draw it by tracing and then apply it to any one of your blocks. This also goes to asymmetric styles, different shapes for example, like if you wanted this more A-line, you could just simply draw it on your model template and you could create it. Okay, so for example, if you do not necessarily want to hand draw on your proportional model template, or maybe there's a particular sleeve that you found online that you really like the look of, but you want to change it ever so slightly, well, there's another technique you can use when it comes to tracing in Adobe Illustrator. So I just found three very simple images on Pinterest of some sleeve concepts. And let's just, I've just simply clicked and dragged them into my artboard. So let me show you that again. <clears throat> so on the side here, I'm just going to click and drag them onto my artboard. And at the moment, they're not embedded, which is why they have this really weird sort of like uh, these diagonal lines over them. So I'm just going to select all of them and go embed. And that just means they're saved to that document. So here, for example, I've just simply screen captured this lovely looking sort of like shirt sleeve. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply, let's reflect it because I want to use this side to so transform, reflect. Let's hit vertical OK. I'm just going to drag it into where it should be. And also I'm going to go to my transparency and make it about 50%. And you see how we can kind of position it over the arm, see what kind of size it is. At the moment, it's way too short, so I can click and drag this out. Maybe drag this out as well. We can move it over a little bit. And you see I'm just mapping it to that uh, proportionate fashion template. And so once we have it aligned up and we're happy with it, 
Let's make it 100%. And the, sorry, the reason why I'm, I'm positioning it over my model template is because I know that this sleeve, if I create it, will fit pretty much all of my other illustrations because I've used the model template to create those. So I'm using the, the proportionate model template to create a sleeve template. So now I'm going to my big section tool, click and drag over all of these and go object and then lock selection. And now let's just zoom in. Hopefully the image isn't too pixelated, which it isn't. So I'm going to now start mapping this out. So let's just go, let's get my big, let's get my pen tool. I'm going to get a stroke color of black stroke color. I'm then going to make this two. Great stuff. And I'm just going to start. So I'm going to click here. I'm also going to follow all of the different creases and folds. This is a really nice way of creating really beautiful, <coughs> sorry, really beautiful sort of like, um, specification illustrations because you're using something that's realistic to create the uh, your let's say illustration so all of the different folds and lines that you'd get on your shirt you're translating into your illustration which makes it more realistic and I'm also gonna do all these folds as well because they're very beautiful it's a very nice structured sleeve and let's take it to here let's just reduce that there we go so move that point out a little bit. Once again, I'm not going over how to use the pen tool and other bits and pieces because we cover all of this in part one and two of this tutorial series. So if you're not sure what I'm doing, just please have a look at those tutorials and it'll become clear. So I'm going to use 0 0.35 for this. I'm just going to click and I'm going to try and map out where the creases are on this shirt sleeve. You see like this fold, I'm kind of trying to define where that fold might be. I'm doing it very quickly. You can obviously be a lot better. You can be more better, a lot better. I don't know, my English is terrible. You can be better at this than I am being. <laughs> okay. Uh, same here as well. We can take this in, maybe take this down to here. Let's have a look. We can do a little bit here as well, just to add a little bit of shaping. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that kind of works. Not really, but it kind of works. Sure. <clears throat> Same with this bit. And then we have this one as well. So obviously add as much detail as you want to, but that's already starting to look quite strong. We can also add the cuff, like so. Let's add a bit of top stitching. Let's also move this down here. So this is going to be our top stitching lines. Great stuff. I mean, that's not beautifully clean. I could clean that up a little bit more. Let's maybe add something here as well, because it's looking a bit odd in that corner. Okay, great. And then let's create the armhole anchor point. Let's do something like that, for example. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my big section tool, click and drag over all of this. I'm going to go object and then group. I can then unlock and get rid of my existing bit that I found online. Let's just add a fill to this so we can't see the model. Perfect. And then let's just grab any top. So for example, we can grab this one, copy it. So this is a bodice that I know works with my model template because I created that illustration using this model template. Let's paste that in. Let's put it into position like so. Oops. Let's line it up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so the sleeve doesn't really fit that much at the moment because this is a bit more of a drop sleeve. So what we can do is we can just extend this out and then, so with my small selection tool, I'm going to grab that point and extend it out. And let's just curve that ever slightly. We could curve this a little bit as well. Take that back. We could take that into here. Great. So that's my sleeve. Also here, I'm going to snip this down the front. I'm going to get rid of this side and this side. I'm then going to join these two. So click on this one. I'm going to click on the outline of this one. I'm going to do my Pathfinder. Join it. Let's remove that point there. We could also remove that. Great. Let's then fill it with something a little bit less grey. There we go. <coughs> and then we can just draw in our little dropped armhole. Make that 0 0.5. Perfect. And then what we do is we would then simply take the whole thing. Oh, our model is still unlocked, so let's just select her. Object, lock, selection. Big section tool, click and drag over this whole item here. Uh, at the moment, okay, so we're losing our dart. You can see the dart isn't there, so I'm just going to click on this my big section tool, go object, and then ungroup. Click on it again. 
And next I'm going to move it down the layers. So object, arrange, send backward. Let's do it again. Object, arrange, send backward. If it's still not appearing, there it is, perfect. I'm going to go click and drag over this whole item and go object and then group. <clears throat> next I'm going to right click, transform, reflect. Going to hit copy across the vertical, move it into position like so. And then we can select these two panels, then go to Pathfinder, unite those two. Didn't really unite it, but that's okay. If that happens to you, just get your plus anchor point tool, click on that line, let's just drag it over so they overlap, select both, and then join. And next, big section tool, click on the whole element, let's go object and then ungroup it. So we just have the outline, and then let's send it down the layers, looking good. Okay, and so that's basically like a shirt sleeve added to some kind of unusual sort of like crop top. I'm not saying it's the best design, I'm just saying it shows you how you can then add that sleeve. And what I could do here is, let's just get my big section tool, I can then select all of it and go object and then group. So it's one item. And then we can get our collar from this one here, copy it, paste it, and we could then add it to this. It's a little bit too small, so let's just simply scale that up. There we go. Let's move it over, let's move it down. And then we could also extend this bottom piece. We could even make this much, much, we can make it far more long line. We could add this little section here. So let's make it like a, almost like a, yeah, we could do that. Let's zoom in. So I'm just creating a panel here. And we could then just transform, reflect, copy. So I'm just showing you kind of like the possibilities of what you can actually do here. Let's select all of this. So I'm going to set this panel, this panel, and this panel. Then let's unite it. Great. Let's then send it to the back. And as you can see, we've got a little bit more of a shirt style, which is great. I can then select this button here. It's all groups. Let's just ungroup it. Let's grab this piece. Let's move it down. And then hit Command D, D, D. And then we just simply select all of this and go Object and then Group. Okay, so that is how you would, let's say, take something online. We won't do the t-shirt, but I'm going to show you this one very quickly because this one's very, very elaborate. So exactly the same concept. Let's move this away. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to make it slightly larger. Let's then Transform, Reflect, click OK. And then going to make it, let's say, what, 50%. Then move it over, try and get it into position. It's probably a little bit too small still. So let's just make it larger. Yeah, like that, I think. Let's nudge it up a little bit, move it in. It's not going to fit my arm, my shoulder perfectly, but that's not a problem. And then once we have it, let's go 100%. I'm going to go Object and then Lock Selection. Let's make sure our model's locked. She is, great. And so next, I'm going to go my Pen Tool. Let's get a line color, which is black. Let's then go to this and let's the stroke, and let's make it two points. And let's start to create. So once again, just tracing this sleeve using the pen tool. For some reason, we haven't got a two-point line. And this isn't black. That's better. So I'm just going to trace around this. This might be really hard to draw by hand, so at least getting it online allows you to trace around it and then implement it into your CADs. Okay, so we've pretty much drawn our sleeve. Uh, we've speeded that process up a little bit because obviously we've gone through the process of doing it, but I just want to show you. So basically now, so this sleeve has got a few different parts to it. So if we were to, for example, just draw all of these inner lines in 0.5 point line, then it wouldn't have much depth. So what I'm going to do is let me just first of all unlock everything. I'm going to remove my sleeve. As you can see, this is my sleeve here. Let's just lock down my model template. I'm going to grab this. Let's just move it over ever so slightly and down a bit so it might match our model template a little better. Let's also rotate this out ever so slightly. So as I was mentioning, let me just add a little bit of a fill to this. Okay, great. So at the moment, it just looks like one big mess of stuff. So here, for example, what I might want to do is I might want to create a line that defines that cuff. 
So if I make it slightly thicker, you can see we're already starting to create... Hang on. Let's lock that down. I'm already starting to create a little bit of definition here just simply by marking in some lines. Same with this one. I could do it a little bit over here as well. We might want to put a little bit out here too. So it just gives it a little bit of an understanding that there's something going on here. We could even add shadowing to this, but I'm going to show you that a little bit later on. We could even grab this line, snip it a little bit. What is it here? We could then add a little bit of depth to that as well. So you see how it's like building up a little bit of, let's say, depth and texture. Also, because we couldn't actually see this side of the sleeve, I might want to also sort of like experiment and play around here to create a better sleeve draft. So something for the inside as well. So let's take it to there. And then here we'd take this out. Maybe we'd bring this point out as well, just to create a little bit of that shape. It won't be perfect, but I'm just doing this very quickly. You can play around with this and take a lot longer on it. And then you can then start to like pretend or add or what you might think be happening here. Move these points around. There we go. I'm not sure I like that point. Let's remove that completely. Let's bring that in. There we go. Maybe it'll look something more like that. Let's snip that there. Let's make this a dark line. As I said, play around with it, see how you get on. I'm not saying this is perfect at all, and I'm being very I'm rushing this a little bit. Just so I don't want to take too much of this tutorial. Okay, play around with it. But that's essentially the concept. We could then add in some more lines here. I'm really not doing a very good job of this, but as I said, take your time with it, play around, see what lines work for you. The more detail you add, the nicer it'll be. Okay, great, so that's, that's one sleeve completed. Let's just select the whole thing with our big section tool, object, and then group it. Let's grab our bodice, so let's just grab this one again, copy it, paste it over, let's chuck it in by the neckline. We can then see how it matches up with our sleeve. Once again, we've got a bit of an issue, so I'm just gonna bring this in ever so slightly. I'm gonna bring this higher up. Let's mark it there. Let's select these points, let's bring these in as well. So this one would actually fit all of my bodice templates that I've created already. And I'm just going to simply right click, transform, reflect, copy, paste it over to the opposite side, match it up. Here we go. Let's just group that. And there we have some really quite interesting sleeves that we might not have otherwise been able to create. And we've just simply done that by finding an image online that we liked and then obviously transferring it and tracing it. And this is not looking particularly good. Let me sort that out. So you can always go back in and sort your illustrations out if they don't look quite right. So that's quite a chunky cuff we've got there. There we go, move that point over a little bit. And once again, we could just then ungroup it, remove that one, because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So transform, reflect it over, copy, drag it into position. Great, that shoulder's a little bit higher than it should be. Select both, we're going to group them, and that's it, and that's one top. And once again, we could add a little, we could add a little collar to that to create something really quite cute. Let's make it slightly larger. So once again, if you have created, let's say, six or seven of these different collars, you could then just add them to any garment that you wanted to. So just have like an archive or a library, which makes things far, far simpler or much, much easier when it comes to creating these illustrations. There we go. Or for example, you didn't want that, you could just remove it and then you could have a different neckline. So let's maybe take it as like a bit of a boat. You could chuck it over here, for example. And now I'm just playing around. Have this come really low. Oh, wow, there you go. <laughs> a little bit of cleaver showing. It's completely up to you. And maybe add some trims as well. Oops. And this is the last thing I'm going to do for this tutorial because we are getting a little bit out of hand here. Oh, it could be quite a nice like little collar concept. It's really quite pretty. 
transform, reflect, copy, move it off to the other opposite side. And there you have a really rather interesting color concept. Okay, so that's pretty much part three complete. In part four, I'm going to show you how to create pockets and necklines and button stands and other design elements to add more intricacy to your specification drawings. Also, if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're new to this channel, then please hit the subscribe button. We've got some amazing content coming up that we'd hate for you to miss. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.